Good morning, saints. I greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune head of God. But once again, it's all under one control, and that's God himself. And once again, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continuously and consistently be in my mouth. And here it is once again. When you think of the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ and all he has done, have mercy, Lord, and doing even as we speak, we have to tell him, thank you and bless your name. And I thank him for each of you this morning who uh, took the time to come out and uh, uh, hear a word from the Lord. Thank you for tuning in on this particular uh, telecast. And I pray and trust that you have come this morning with a thirst, with a hunger and a thirst, with uh, some uh, expectation and some anticipation. And I pray you come looking for something from the Lord Jesus Christ because he has it. Everything that we need, once again, we can find it in the word of God. And I pray and trust that whatever your need has been uh, for uh, the, the, the since the last time that we uh, had an opportunity to meet and and to talk, that God has met that need and He has met it abundantly. Have mercy, Lord, and that all is well in the house. Thank you once again for tuning in to see what the Lord has to say. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our Father, it's once again that we come as humble as we know how. Lord, in our spirits, uh, we give you right now glory and honor and praise and reverence for you being God and you're God all by yourself. And we present ourselves to you, Lord, as a living sacrifice Lord, we are holy and acceptable unto you. We're here, God, for your use and for your purpose. And Lord, we love you and we thank you so much, God, for going ahead of us. Have mercy, Lord, and making the way clear for us, God. You keep it hurt and harm out of our way. Lord, we thank you right now that you are controlling our minds that you're not letting us be conformed to the world, but we're transforming our minds, God, to, to keep our minds stayed on you. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. Whatever our, our needs are, Lord, we thank you for meeting those needs in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we come once again, we want to be better when we leave than it was when we came. But we can only do it through your power and your strength, God. Have mercy on us now. Bless and keep us this hour, God. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning in to the telecast today and to see what the Lord has to say. Uh, in his word and uh, again I pray and trust that you have, you have come with a, a thirsty spirit and a thirsty heart uh, you're eager to hear and see what the Lord has to say and there is a word that comes from the Lord today and it's coming out of the book of 1st John 1st John the 5th chapter 1st John the 5th chapter uh, beginning at verse 1 you will find these words. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And every one that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Verse 4, For 
whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. How mercy, the Lord. Uh, the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. And I thank the Holy Spirit who has provided me with a theme or topic uh, to go along with the focal verses this morning that would hopefully add a little bit more clarity to uh, uh, the word uh, as, as the seed go out. And remember, uh, the, the seed is always good because it, it is the word of God that that seed will uh, be planted in our spirit and in our heart. And as it began to manifest itself, uh, and in that manifestation that our lives are beginning to transform, have mercy, Lord, that we will be able to live a life that may be pleasing unto the Lord for the rest of our lives. So for just a few minutes this morning, I want to speak with you on this subject obedience and faith. Have mercy, Lord, obedience and faith. And these are two very powerful words in the gospel, in the scriptures of Jesus Christ. Have mercy, Lord, because it, it, it is these two words that really moves the hand of God. Have mercy, Lord. Now, when we look at the word obedience, obedience, it tells us to hear God's word and to act accordingly obedience, to hear God's word and to act accordingly. Faith said it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what does that tell me? That if I just obey the word of God and when I go before the Lord in prayer, the fact that I'm obedient to the word of God, God will hear my prayer. And, and the reason he will hear my prayer is because I have asked in obedience and according to the will of God. God promised to answer his will. Have mercy, Lord. Obedience and faith. Now, when we look at and examine this particular passage of scripture. John tells us here that uh, Christ entered into human history. He says through the incarnation, which is the son of God, becomes the very embodiment of God in the flesh. Now, if anyone tells you about Jesus Christ and does not use the flesh is not of God. Have mercy, Lord. Jesus took on flesh. That's what the word of God tells us. Have mercy, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. He embodied God in the flesh. Have mercy, Lord. John said he's seen, heard, and he was touched by uh, who is the author of this epistle, which is John himself. John said, I've seen and, and I heard and, and, and I was touched by God. He goes on to tell us, he says that he walked with God and he talked with uh, God and, and he saw him heal. How much the Lord? He heard him teach. He watched him die and he saw him ascended into to heaven. So John has firsthand knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we trust his, his, his words? Yes, we can. Have mercy, Lord. Now, as the elder statement in the church, John, he wrote a letter to the children to, to dispel doubt and to build assurances, he says, by presenting a clear picture of Christ. A clear picture of Christ. Now, in it, he presents God as light, as love, and as life. 
Have mercy, Lord. In Psalms 27 and 1, it says that Christ Jesus is the light of my what? salvation. So when we walk out into the world, when we present uh, present ourselves to the world, uh, we are putting Christ on display. The, the world needs to see the light in us. They need to see the love in us. They need to see the life that we live. Have mercy, Lord. And it's all because of that light of Jesus Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Obedience and faith. Now, John goes on, he explains in simple and practical terms what it means, he says, to have fellowship with God, with God. He says that he, he wants them, talking about the, uh, the children of God now, he wants them to know God as light. He is the light of the world. Want to know him as light, which symbolizing uh, absolute purity and holiness and how believers can walk in God's light and have fellowship with him. And John says you can do this daily, 365 days a year, all day long. You can walk in God's light. But it has to be done, he says, through obedience and faith. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. It can be done, children. It can be done. John goes on. He says, when we become Christians, when we become Christians, we become, he says, part of God's family. We're part of God's family with fellowship and with fellow believers, our brothers and our sisters. This is what John is telling us in the Word today. Now, he goes on to tell us, he says, it is God who determines who the other family members are, not us. It is God who gives salvation. And this is what John is saying. John is says, you don't determine the children. He says, God determines that. Have mercy, Lord. God determines that. He says we are simply called to accept and to love them as they are. God does the changing. Have mercy, Lord. This is what he's telling. He says, so the question is, how well do you treat your fellow members of your family of God? Do you, do you treat them, your brothers and sisters, with love, uh, with, with care, with, with compassion, with understanding? This is what John is saying. Do you treat them that way? That is the question. Because we all, he said, are children of God. We all are part of the body of Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Now, John concludes the test of life, but he resumes the test of doctoring, or we might also call it the test of faith. Now, the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. It is impossible. He says in the first three verses of this particular passage of Scripture uh, that we read are given, he said, the results of faith. And these are first, he says, divine faith. We must believe that Jesus is a dead, buried, and risen Savior. Divine faith. And then he says, uh, then love for God. How mercy, Lord. Uh, the Bible says, if, if you uh, love me, then you have to love God. Because God is love. Or if you love God, then you have to love me. Because God is what? Love. How mercy, Lord. Then he says to, to love one another, one another. He says, uh, and finally, obedience to God's commandments. Obey the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it does us no good to just read it if we are not going to obey it. Have mercy, Lord. That's when God, when we move the hand of God in our obedience. In our faith. 
John goes on to tell us, he says, first of all, we have a divine birth. He said, which means that whoever uh, believes that Jesus is the Christ, he says, is born of God. Is born of God. He says, belief here is not a mere uh, intellectual acceptance. It is not based on uh, intelligence, my brothers and my sisters. It is not based on how smart you are. Have mercy, Lord. He says the fact, but rather it is based on your commitment. It's, it's commitment of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ as the son of the living God. It's not how smart you are, but it's your commitment, your surrenderance to the Lord Jesus Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Faith produces love and obedience. This is what John says. Faith produces love and obedience. Ah, if we have been truly born of God, truly born of God, then we have, uh, we will love him. We will love him because what God is love. How mercy, Lord. The Bible says, how can you uh, uh, hate me and say you love God and you see me every day? Every day. And you won't give me the time of day, but you love God. You cannot, Jesus said, it cannot be that way. If you love God, you have to love me. How mercy, Lord. And he says, not only that, he says, we will love all his children as well. All of us, we will love the, the, the believers of Jesus Christ. This is what John is saying. He says, it's, it's good to notice that we are uh, to love all believers. He says, it's good to know that. And not just those, uh, he said, of a certain earthly communion of, of fellowship. In other words, we don't pick out who to love. J the Bible says, to love ye one to another. He says, as I have loved you. You don't have a choice in the matter. If you do have a choice, then it's not of God. Have mercy, Lord. That's your own choosing, your own desires. You have gotten away from the righteousness of God and, and established your own way. Have mercy, Lord. And we're going to soon be coming to a close. John goes on to tell us, he says, another element of faith is obedience to God's commandments. To God's commandments. Remember, uh, 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 he tells us that if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. He says, by this, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments, that's how we know that we belong to God. Have mercy, Lord. Those who are truly saved will be characterized. See, you, you, there's a label on you at this, at this particular time. Those who are truly saved will be characterized. There is something about your nature. There, there is something about your countenance. Have mercy, Lord. There, there is something about your spirit. Uh, you, you're characterized. Uh, you, you, you're marked. By the Spirit of God. Oh, he says you will be characterized by a desire to do the will of God. To do the will of God. Our love for God is expressed in willing obedience to his commandments. It's not something that you have to be pushed or prodded to do. It, it is a willingness to obey God's commandment. It, it's that mark on you. It, it's, it's that character in you that, that is a willing spirit to do God's commandments. Remember, obedience and faith. Have mercy, Lord. The Lord Jesus said, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. Have mercy, Lord. 
Now, when John says that uh, Jesus' uh, commandments are not burdensome, he, he does not mean that, that, that they are not difficult. They're not difficult. That, that's not what he said. He said, but rather uh, that they are uh, very, the very things which born-again believers love to do. Because it, we know that it is of God. It, it, it's not arduous. It's not difficult. The burden is not difficult simply because we know the word of God. Remember, he told us that he would never leave us or forsake us. So it's not burdensome. It's, it's not hard. It's not difficult. See, we have to learn to, to take our eyes off of the problem and to keep our eyes on the Jesus. And if we do that, obedience and faith and the work is done have mercy lord john says it's 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 not hard it's not hard to do he says when you tell a mother to take good care of her baby he said you are only telling her what she loves to do we're talking about real mothers now real mothers when you tell them to take care of their child or their children, you're telling them what they love to do. Good example of that. He said the commandments of the Lord are the things in which are best for us. God knows what is best for us. And he says, and the things in which uh, we are new creatures in Christ now. We're new creatures in Christ. And these are the things which we take pleasure in doing. Because we know where God lies. He's in the mix. He's gone ahead of us. He's all around us. So it's not difficult. We just learn to stay focused, be obedient, and stay in faith. That's what we have to learn to do. Have mercy, Lord. And we're coming to a close. Jesus never promised that obeying him would be easy. He never promised that. Have mercy, Lord. He said it takes hard work. It, it takes uh, commitment. It takes reading the word of God. It takes prayer. It takes meditation. He did not promise that it would be easy. But when we surrender all to him, when we commit ourselves to him, then John tells us, he says, the reward will be very good. The reward of obedience, the reward of being faithful, he says, would be very good. Have mercy, Lord. Hard work, John says, and self-discipline of serving Christ is no burden to those who love him. And it's not. It's, it's not burdensome. Have mercy, Lord. Now, you, you know, Satan will come into our, our minds and he will try and plant uh, some seed of deception uh, because of what we are going through that God doesn't love us or, or that God doesn't care. But see, we know better as believers because we understand that greater is he that is in us than what I see, than what I'm facing. So, so that's why I have to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just obey his word and believe that he is who he say that he is. Remember, he, he he's a dead, buried, and risen Savior. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father. He intercedes for us every day. It's not hard to trust him. So the burden doesn't become that hard. He says, John, and, and he says, uh, and if the load starts to feel heavy, now, he didn't say get heavy, but if it starts to feel heavy, have mercy, Lord. He said, you can always, always call and trust Christ to help you bear the load. 
Remember, he tells us in his word to bring all of our cares unto him. Why? Because he cares for us. That's why. And he will help you carry the load. Overcomers. Overcomers. John clearly defined overcomers. He says, who these are? Who, 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 who are these people? He said, they are the ones who believe that Jesus is God's son, only son. And he gave him to the world that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, we must believe that as overcomers. He says, a dead, buried, and risen Savior who now once again sits on the right hand of the Father and he intercedes for you and I every day. We are never alone. I don't care how difficult it may seem. I don't care. He says, just be obedient to the word of God. Follow me in the word of God and have faith to believe that I will do just what I said in my word. Listen, let me say this. Obedience and faith. Have mercy, Lord. I, was lost. I pray and trust that a seed went out today Listen. and you allowed that seed to in fall world, in your heart and it be already beginning to manifest itself and you can feel and you can see the transformation of your life that you are headed to be better off believe that the doors of the church are open and they have been open ever since God told Peter he said upon this rock I will build my church the invitation he left it open and it is still open today will you come will you come remember there is so much happening in the world today we are not promised the next day yesterday is gone tomorrow is not promised all you have is right now if Jesus stepped out on the cloud right now and started back, how much of all, are you certain that you will go back with him? If not, then you need to get in a hurry, how much of all, and give your life to Christ. Will you come today? Will you come today? I can be reached. If you just want to talk to me about salvation, about obedience, about faith, can I, say one more I can be reached at 850-893-7085. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our Father, once again, we are just so delighted, God. Have mercy, Lord, that your presence is in this place today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for abiding in each of our hearts. Lord, we desire to have a closer walk with you. We desire to have a closer relationship with you, God. So, Lord, help us in our obedience in your word. Help us with our faith, God. Faith, God, is to trust you for your word that you will do what you said in your word. So God, as we present ourselves once again as that living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto you, humble our spirit, God. Lord, that, that we would believe, that we will feel, and that we will know without a shadow of a doubt, God, that you are Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and that you care for me. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much, God, for first loving us. Lord, I pray right now that you would keep us in your care. Bless us individually and bless us collectively. Give us that love, God, that we will care more and for. 
bless us now indeed. And it is in Christ Jesus' name we do pray. And the Redeemer of the Lord said, Amen. It is once again that I am just so grateful for the opportunity to share a word with you through this particular format. And I pray and trust that God will continue to show you his favor, that he will bless you abundantly, that the rest of this day, I must Lord, that God will show himself favorably to you. And for the coming week, once again, that God will show up and that you will be able to recognize him when he does and tell him thank you and bless his name remember remember always always that God loves you and so do I y'all be blessed take care of yourselves and take care of one